you're allowed to be angry. Sometimes you're mad that you're mad. Like, why am I letting this make me mad? Don't be mad that it's making you mad. Accept that you're, it's something that made you mad and get through it. Acceptance will get you through things much better than just sitting and dwelling in it. Whether it's like sadness or anger towards what you wish your life could be or what you want it to be. It's a relationship with someone. Sometimes you just gotta really accept. Like that's like such a major step. Accepting who you are, your situation, and making the best of it. Overall, more than anything, looking at everyone as being equal. Like we're so equal so what do i have to lose by being myself and showing people the art that i create and if someone doesn't like it then that's just not my team my group my people i can't hold back and not be myself due to being scared and afraid <laughs> Welcome b -b 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 back to the tree house show. You just listened to a very short snippet of Alchemist. Listen, I'm gonna drop it soon. I know I said this every episode, it's coming out. Mm -hmm. Please hold your horses, listen and trust me. Today, uh, first of all, I think you're tapped into the trillest podcast in the universe. Um, today, we have an extremely special guest. You know, listen, the universe was trying to not make this happen. You know, <laughs> I have ultimate respect for the universe, but like, why you do this? But finally, you know, the stars aligned and we were able to connect after, you know, multiple trials and errors. But uh, I'm glad the universe brought this amazing, spiritual, multidimensional being here today with a story of, you know, growing up and really not fitting in, growing up and, you know, being outside of the box and, you know, just facing frustration for not being able to pursue, you know, her passion to the fullest degree and kind of a story of, you know what it takes to just go all in completely immerse yourself into what you find passionate and you know is on the other side of that journey still figuring out life but it's in a place of creating you know her true passion you know as an artist you know in all shapes and forms i don't want to spoil all the things she does because i feel like she explains it much better than me <laughs> but without further ado we have the one the only tiana aura oh thank you Stop, stop. <laughs> we got griffin in the back too chilling i don't know if you can see his legs but <laughs> <laughs> he's chilling you know he's chilling thank mm. you so much for having me i'm happy You're that welcome. things finally worked out and aligned you know, and I believe it happens exactly when it's meant to. So this is perfect timing. Yes. For sure. Speaking of timing, mm -hmm. right? I think I was listening to, I don't want to butcher the song. I was listening to the song Dream. Mm -hmm. And one of your lyrics Dream. was like, I'm bad with time. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's just some, some honest words, you know. <laughs> Guess what? I'm terrible with time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I I tell myself I'm gonna get better, but I don't. I, but I but I still never too late. But I don't know. I have a really weird feeling about time, anyways. Like time is very weird to me. It's very like matrixy to even like consider time. Like what is time, you know? But then sometimes we have to really use time. Like when you got an appointment, you got to be at you know to get some stuff done. Sometimes you got to be on time. So I am working on it, but it's hard. <laughs> Why, why do you think time is so hard for us to like fully grasp? I don't know. Just, I mean, the best way to put it is I'm on my own schedule. You know, I just, I, even if I'm late, sometimes I still just, I just feel like that things will just flow with what happens. Like I just trust it to, I don't know if I shouldn't be like that. I don't know if I should be more sharp about it, but it does stress me out. That's one thing. Like not being on time does stress me out so it would save me some stress to try to be more on time but yeah i i always just try to be relaxed about it still when i'm not on time mm. i feel like that is a very evolved answer mm -hmm. you know a lot of people they try to like stress like they either get defensive like oh i'm usually on time like yeah or they just like go super into the yeah, I'm always late and it's just it is what it is mm -hmm. but I like how you said like I'm just on my own schedule mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's a very co confident comfortable answer mm -hmm. um, what kind of got you to that point where you just like acceptance like you know 
I'm, I'm on my own schedule and it's like I know when time is important but it's like overall I'm just comfortable with like listening to my body well to be honest it's because it's weird like as much as we want to be on time i feel like a lot of people are running behind usually when i contact someone and tell them i'm running behind <laughs> they're running behind too you know and even with like the appointments that i've had to go to you know for a doctor's office you know visits and stuff like that I get there. Why do they tell you that your appointment is at 12 o'clock and then the doctor doesn't take you until 1230 or 1245? You know, like, I don't know if the doctor's running behind or if they do that intentionally. But so in my head, I'm just like, OK, if I get there at 1215, they're still going to take me they're, They still want me to come in. So it'll be OK. <laughs> so, but it still does stress me out because I don't like to repetitively be late. That's when it starts to get, like, a little, like, awkward and embarrassing for me. It's like, dang, these people are going to look like this woman can never be on time, you know? You know? So, yeah. And I guess I am taking being called out, you know, for, for being late pretty well, though. Because if they did that to me at the office, though, I probably would get really upset. Hmm. <laughs> but, but talking with you, I feel very calm about it. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. You know what I'm saying? I would be like, wait, hold on. You guys are always late anyways. You don't take me back to 1230. Right. <laughs> you know, so. Mm, that is wonderful. Mm -hmm. No, it's just everything you said. It was like almost like validated for me because I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, see, I'm not the only one late. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> you know what I'm You're not. Because you I'd be late to the month. I'd be late mm -hmm. to my own yoga class, but still fucking show up. Quit playing with me. Okay. Um, right. Because right? when we there, we there. <laughs> When we there, right? we there. I, you know what I'm saying? I may not be there on time at my own class, but when we show up, we show out. Yeah. Yeah. And even you still show up, though. That's the point. You know what I mean? And, like, when I go to different events and things, like, for performing and for art and stuff, like, no one has ever really gotten upset at me for being late. And maybe that's part of why I haven't worked as hard on it as I could, too. Mm. Um, you know? Like, I've never pulled up to an event late for a performance or to bring my art, and someone's been like, Tiana, you know, you, you needed to be here earlier. Um, we needed you to bring your belong. Everybody's just like, oh, hey, good to see you. So it's kind of like, I'm like, oh, well, it's cool that I'm late. Nobody cares, you know. Mm. And this is going to be really random. Mm. But this fruit, I think I know what it is. It just came to my head out of nowhere. Yes, yes, let's go. Is it a pomegranate? Yes. Oh, my oh. God. Oh. Why, did it, why did it come to my head out of nowhere? Because the colors took time to process, you know. Yeah, I just yeah. like saw it. Wow, I've never like opened one, so yeah, we can we get finna, back to that whenever. We finna get to that. Okay. We finna yeah. <laughs> um, no, thank thank you for sharing that. I feel mm. like you know what I'm saying for my own self, I was feeling a little late late, so I needed that. Um, oh, thank uh, you for for providing late me that is normal. that release. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Being on time is awkward. What what Kanye <laughs> said? What Kanye said? You should be honored by my greatness right? that I would even show up. <laughs> The fact that I even arrived here you two hours me? late, you know. Right, I arrived. <laughs> you feel me? It's king shit. Um, nah, but I had a podcast mm -hmm. last week. Amazing episode. Um, shout out Mike. He is now in Peru taking okay. ayahuasca, living his best life. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, but he dropped some gems before he went off the deep end. Mm -hmm. And he said... <laughs> He's going to be a new person when he comes back. That's all I got to oh, say. Oh, wow. Are you going to do another ayahuasca. interview after that? Like, yeah, I want to see a post, a pre-ayahuasca and post-ayahuasca. Yeah, you yeah, should. Yeah, yeah I want to know. Be, that's mm -hmm. going to be fascinating. But he brought up a very interesting point. He, he mentioned how, like, growing up, he was very, like, awkward. He's Asian, so he said he would only, like, sit with the Asian kids. He, he, he kind of stuck in his, his own box. Mm -hmm. You know, he was very, called himself a loser. Like, he was scared to talk to girls. He was scared to talk to anybody. Just kind of, like, just really shy, timid, you know, type kid. Mm-hmm. And he mentioned how what got him out of that was just like the overwhelming feeling of like s suffering and like pain. He was just like, no, nah, I can't do this no more. Like, I want to I want to be more. I want to like get out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So I say this to say, you know, you mentioned art. You mentioned off the record. You, first of all, I kind of want to hear, you know, your background in art. You know, where where did it start from? I feel like that'll just give more context before I really ask the question. Mm hmm my background in art i would say i mean it definitely it started from growing up around my grandmother both of my grandmothers um they were artists in themselves as well too um both of my grandmother they would make um like jewelry you know 
handcraft jewelry and things like that or draw um I mean, so I know that's where it initially came from. They would create clothing, you know, come up with an idea off of, you know, something that they look at and they're like, oh, I can make this better. You know, so I know where that, that came from. And then getting into it in school is, was like kind of like the next step. It's like, okay, wow, I, I really want to pursue this myself, you know, as far as like artwork on canvas mm. and jewelry and stuff. <laughs> Music is, you know, a whole nother story, I think. Let's let's hear the music story. Like, how did that become? Because off the record, you know, you seem really passionate about it. But I kind of mm-hmm. want to hear that, you know, share that with the with the listeners. Yeah, I, I love making music. I mean, I started making music since I can remember since being in literally like elementary school and writing about like having a crush on a boy <laughs> in class and like third grade and stuff. <laughs> like, stuff like that. Um So I've always been into music, and then when I was in school, I made sure I participated in choir, and um, I tried band. I I wasn't really good at playing instruments, but I'm more so of, like, the person that performs vocally, you know, with my voice Mm -hmm. instead of playing the instrument as much. Um, I tried playing instruments, tried playing guitar, tried playing piano more than anything, and I got with piano just a little bit, but it's just, I'm a performer that like uses her voice it just seems like that's what fits for me so um and with writing as well you know because I write poetry and I write my own lyrics so um I would say you know in high school being in choir in high school that was very fun we got to have different shows we pretty much you know would be told by our choir um teacher instructor whatever she would let us know okay so these are the songs we're going to perform and we would rehearse over several weeks and then we perform for our parents or family friends whoever wanted to come to the recital and the event and stuff Mm. so i really enjoyed that i participated in um, theater as well so you know theater would be acting and singing performing which i i love acting as much as i loved singing you know a lot growing up as well but i feel like you know, with singing and writing music, that's just really me projecting me more so than acting. So I think that's why I've stuck with that so much. And um, with music, when I first got started in finally making music of my own, I will never forget. I took a trip out to um, Colorado, Denver, Colorado, with one of my friend's mothers. And um, I made a friend out there that lived in Las Vegas. And they invited me to Vegas and I had driven my car out there. I had, I was making my own schedule at that time as a hairstylist. I'm like, shoot, you live in Vegas? I can come out to Vegas for a week too. I, you know, I'm like, let me, let me go. So let's do it. Went out to Vegas. Um, the new friend that I made wasn't all they were cracked up to be. So you gotta be careful, you know, no new friends, you know, be careful, be careful a little bit. So um, luckily it kind of ended up ironically that um, I called one of my relatives who traveled a lot and I knew that she would, you know, come out to see me. I'm like, maybe my cousin will come out to see me and she'll just drive my vehicle back to Indiana with me. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened that she was in L.A. And L.A. was just like a two, three hour drive from Las Vegas. So I'm like, here I am. You know, I was in my early 20s. No, I was 21, maybe 22 maybe 23 um and I drove out to to LA from Vegas alone and I don't know that drive something about that drive was just inspiring the fact that I knew I was going to see Hollywood in LA a place that I had never been and of course where you like picture all of your favorite artists being you know as a child and stuff so I thought that that's where I was going to this big you know place that I'd seen on TV and all that and um, yeah, so once I got out there, um, I felt so inspired. I started seeing some of the artists that I even loved growing up and stuff like, it was just like, wow, these people are just like me, mm. you know? And then I also discovered my favorite artist um, for a period of time. Their name was Tara Jr. Mm. Their song lyrics were very like relevant to my life and very just like, natural like it seemed like they flowed with their lyrics like they weren't trying like it seemed like they were just talking about everyday stuff and i'm like i can make music Mm. between between me taking that trip to hollywood and la and listening to these artists that really inspire me i'm like 
okay, I've been wanting to make music. Like, what, what's stopping me? So I was just, you know, dying to make music at a certain point or living to make music, whatever way you want to look at it, you know. And I started trying to create on my own, and I also started eventually doing research outside of Indiana for producers and, and stuff to work with. Sorry, I was, like, trying to get a lot out, but not trying to overdo it. <laughs> no, that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Um, I love going all the way back to the concept of I wanted to project me. Mm -hmm. Right? Why do you think projecting you was so important to you? It just feels the most genuine. I don't know. Like, acting seems fun, and it is fun. But it's hard. Like, acting is hard work to put on a character, you know? And it's not really difficult for me to be me. It just comes naturally. So for me to be able to say what's on my mind with my own song lyrics, my own poetry, like, it's just, it's easy. <laughs> it's easy. No, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot of people don't find it. A lot of people find it difficult to be them, mm -hmm. but you say it's easy to be you. I feel like that's something that you experience through experiences. Mm -hmm. That's something that you learn that, okay, I've experienced not being me mm -hmm. and I don't fuck with that. Yeah. So therefore I'm going to just be me. Mm -hmm. What was that experience of finding out that I'm more comfortable being me? Um, I mean, just years of trying to, you know, go out and, party with people and stuff it's just something that I involve myself in you know not everybody grows up from high school and wants to go out and and party and, and mingle like that but I was one of the teenagers at the time who did um or young adults to still in my early 20s I loved to go out I loved to drink you know and and do all of that but um I don't know my life just started changing I just started feeling really unhealthy you know it, it all kind of started with my eating mm. and then it expanded to like trying to be even more healthy than just my eating it wasn't just about my eating because you like when I say healthy initially I'm talking about being vegan so I became vegan but I was still drinking alcohol and going out and stuff so just because you're vegan doesn't mean you're healthy you know I eventually wanted to become healthy I'm just like what what am I doing you know waking up every day feeling like crap not able to get things done it's just not exciting I've lost the excitement in that now I find excitement in waking up and being myself and being sober and seeing what life is really like you know mm. oh yeah I feel like a lot of people you know they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. you know it's like okay I'm in I'm in high school you know some people start earlier than that, mm -hmm. but it's like, okay, I'm popping out. This is just new. But then it's like, okay, throughout, okay, high school, okay, 17, 18, okay, throughout college, okay, now you're 24, 25. It's like, hmm, why am I still doing this? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I feel like a lot of people, like we see these TikTok videos or we see these like American Pie, like these like teenage, you know, movies. It's like, okay, that's what's normal. Yeah. You know, hang out with the frat boys, mm -hmm. you know, abandoned warehouse, let's throw a rave, you know? Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> What's at the core of that? Did you ever kind of look into like why you were so attracted to that lifestyle of partying? Exactly, exactly. And why are we so scared to hang out by ourselves? You know what I mean? Because yeah. it almost seems like that. It's like on the weekend, it's like, all right, what's going on tonight? Let me get out. Why can't you stay at home? Mm. Like, why don't you stay at home and just sit and stare at a wall for a little bit and see what comes to mind? <laughs> you know, like we need to do that a little bit more. You get Absolutely. a lot more done when you allow your mind to break, you know? And that's what I mean, even from the phone too because I tried to take a little break from my phone at one point and my brain got so creative when I stopped looking at my phone so much and just started staring at the wall like your brain starts wilding out a little bit it gets bored so it's like all right what are we gonna do <laughs> you know absolutely so yeah I'm sorry I kind of got mm. off subject but yeah it's like why are we so scared to spend time alone with ourselves but like for you like personally right mm -hmm. did you did you like, okay, I'm, I'm done with this. And then you moved on or like, like, did you ever get to the core? And it's like, if, if it's not something that you've like processed, then it's like, that's cool too. So we can like toss that question. But like, mm -hmm. if it helps people, cause a lot of people, once they figure out why they do something, sometimes they, 
it's like they don't need to do it anymore because mm-hmm. they're like oh I, I do this because of this but it's like oh i could just start doing this other thing and then i've got to do that mm-hmm. but a lot of people just tunnel vision keep doing it blindly not knowing at the core of why they're doing it mm-hmm. and you seem like someone who's very evolved so that's why i'm asking you because i feel like that could help a lot of people did you ever get to the core of like why you were like so into that lifestyle why you were so attracted to partying all the time and why you were so like you know just drinking and like all that um i mean to be honest through all of it i really just think it's bad influence now i know that people still can make their own decisions because you know you can grow up in a house where your parents you know use alcohol or don't use alcohol and you could come out either way you could come out where you use alcohol or you, don't, you know what i mean so i really just think it's about what you allow to influence you I mean, the friends you keep is the most important thing, to be honest. Like, who, are, what kind of people are you hanging out with? You know? Um, and it's, it's hard because you want to influence people around you to do better. That's the goal. But, like, certain people, they have to get there on their own. So, if you're trying to get away from going out and partying and drinking all the time or experimenting with drugs... You can't hang out with the people who are. You just can't. You can't say that you're going to quit and still hang out with them. It's not going to work. Try new friends. Switch your whole vibration. Switch your whole environment. Wake up. Try meditating. Start trying yoga. Go to other people's classes who are doing yoga and meditation. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to change the whole thing. Hanging out with the people that are still doing that is not... That's not going to make a change. And I mean, it is hard because these might be your best friends. But you just, next time they ask you, hey, we going, uh, you know, honestly, I think I'm going to get some rest tonight. So it just, it just takes something within you. And I was influenced. That's the reason why I'm bringing this up. Because I was finally influenced by someone else who was on the right path. Mm. And I don't know if that's what it takes for everybody. But yeah, you might just literally run into the right person or right people whether it's through social media, you might find someone on social media that you want to connect with, or you might be at the grocery store and meet someone like, wow, and exchange information, like we should talk more. But you need the right influence in your life because even your parents might not be the right influence, your siblings might not be the right influence. Not everybody wants to be healthy. Not everybody cares about being healthy. Some people laugh at this. Some people are like, "Uh, I'm gonna die anyway, so I'm still gonna eat that McDonald's. I'm still gonna drink this, you know, we're all gonna die, you know? And then there's us who just want to feel our best while we're here. So you got to revolve, you know, your relationships with those type of people, the right people. That, that's the, the best answer I think I can give right now. Mm. The influence. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. No, that was just a, a wave of fresh air. Just mm-hmm. like people needed to hear that. Yeah, it's you know? true. No, it's just hundred percent facts. Yeah, you you're gonna you're gonna have to cut some people off. It it might be hard, but they're just not the right people for your elevating time in your life, you know. Absolutely. You know, just going back to you know, influence mm-hmm. and you know, I, I I'll go back to that song Dream. You know, I love mm-hmm. how you how you mentioned, you know, about like the the programming. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like health and all that and even you know, this one I feel really touched me. I love the song Inadequate. Mm-hmm. You know how, it, I'm, I'm actually going to quote you. <laughs> Correct me if I quoted you wrong. Yeah, but I love how you say, you know, no perfection. It's about accept- acceptance. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like a lot of people, you know, a lot of kids, a lot of young men, a lot of young women, you know, we go around looking outwards, mm-hmm. you know, and seeing on the what, what's being promoted on the social media, seeing what's cool on the TikTok. And then like, oh, I don't have that. Oh, I don't look like that oh, I don't have money to afford that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's like, okay, you know what? Let's just even say they had a good upbringing. Let's even say their parents instill values in them where it's Mm -hmm. like they have a good confidence. But it's like, how much can you be bombarded with these images of like people who don't look like you, people who look like you, but then are in certain situations. And it's like, oh, wow, I could I could do what they did and and maybe have a life like that. Mm -hmm. How, How long can you be fed that doctrine? And even with the strong upbringing, even with both parents, even with everything, all the stars aligned, perfect childhood, how do you, how do you not fold, you mm-hmm. know? So I, I say all this to say, I, I really admire your music. I love the message behind it, you know? Is, is that part of, you know, maybe your inner child or is that part of you 
and I don't want to say trying to influence people, but just trying to project you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Like, I, I just, I want people to understand that, like, some things you have to accept and you don't need to compare yourself, you know? Literally, it's like acceptance will get you through things much better than just sitting and dwelling in it whether it's like sadness or anger towards what you wish your life could be or what you want it to be, you know, or, or anything else, the relationship with someone. Sometimes you just got to really accept, like, that's like such a major step, you know, like you can, you can even accept that you're allowed to be angry. Sometimes you're mad that you're mad. Like, why am I letting this make me mad? You know, don't be mad that it's making you mad, except that you're, it's something that made you mad and get through it you know what i mean so acceptance is a major key in a part of elevation as well you know just ex- accepting who you are your situation and making the best of it mm. yes that acceptance piece is powerful mm-hmm. actually i didn't do it with you all i focused on breathing with you all mm-hmm. but one of my og classes i used i used to do like welcoming exercises it's basically acceptance mm-hmm. where it's taking time Bring awareness to your breath, bring awareness to your surroundings. And now it's like, bring awareness to your mind. What's your mental health like right now? What are you thinking about? Are you thinking about that you're late to this class? Say that out loud, you Mm -hmm. know, and then say, I accept the fact that I'm feeling shitty or feeling that I'm being judged Mm -hmm. because I'm I'm late for this class. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if no one else is thinking that. But if you're thinking that, accept it. Mm -hmm. And I love how you used the word acceptance. Mm -hmm. You didn't use the word uh, attach or mm-hmm. linger or mm-hmm. hold on to it. You just said ex- acceptance doesn't mean holding on to it. Mm-hmm. It just means acknowledging it that you felt that way, and then, and I noticed when you do this long enough, it doesn't phase you as much. It's like okay, exactly. I'm human. Okay, these thoughts that come in and out of my head, it's just my lizard brain, and it's like as long as I'm on this planet in this vessel, it's gonna that's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. It's acceptance, and I can do practices that work on that. I can meditate. Exactly. I can yoga. I can go on a retreat. I can just engulf myself in nature, you know what I'm saying? Or some people microdose, whatever. Mm. Over time, you know, with good intentions, with good anticipations and practices, those thoughts will lessen. But in the moment of these thoughts, it's good to accept it because that's mm. all you can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't and fight it off. Absolutely. And going back to you, I would like to find, because I see you here, you know, super confident, you know, with your music. But it, I feel like that's a place a lot of people have to get to. Mm-hmm. And I feel like before you can get to a state of confidence, you have to accept yourself first. Mm-hmm. What was kind of your journey of finding acceptance? You know, I'm trying to try to think like, cause you know, the journey of acceptance, you know, has come over years and years and years. So it's a number of things, but it's just like mm, overall more than anything looking at everyone is being equal like we're so equal so what do i have to lose by being myself and showing people the art that i create what do i have to lose and if someone doesn't like it or isn't interested in it then that's just not my my team my group my people you know that's fine i don't expect everybody on the planet to to have to love my song you know what I mean or my music or like there's there's so many artists there's so many genres you know everybody is entitled to to love what they love and you know so it's just I can't I can't hold back and not be myself due to being scared and afraid you know so I accept myself as an artist this is what I like to make and when I put something out I'm like well Hopefully, maybe somebody will vibe with this, too. They'll relate to it or they'll just be like, man, this makes me want to move. Or they'll be like, wow, like I can totally, you know, feel this because, you know, whatever reason. So, yeah. It's a great answer. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And, um, no, I, l- I like that you mentioned that. I do want to go back to how you mentioned before how, you know, you go on this big trip to mm-hmm. L.A. Mm-hmm. And then you're just like, I can't wait anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I interpret that also what you said off the record, too, is just like if I if I don't make music, I'm gonna go crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, that that resonated with me. Mm -hmm. And it's like anybody who says that 
I feel like that's a part of acceptance. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like that's like the seed of acceptance because it's like, I feel like whenever you're doing something and you're that passionate about it to the point where like, it's going like, to affect your mental health. Hell, <laughs> mental health, mental health. Yeah. <laughs> I'm crying. Yeah. Um, he, he, see, Griffin, he didn't tap in today. He listened to that. Yeah, he, yeah, he had <laughs> a whole another vibration. Listen, he on his own vibe. Listen, That's whew, fine. blessings to your brother. <laughs> um, now, nah, mental health. And I feel like that goes beyond. Like, I hope they like my music. I hope they um, hope this resonates with somebody. I feel like you... And correct me if I'm wrong, the vibe I'm, I got from that expression was I'm making music because, like, for me, mm-hmm. I'm making music because it's like I just want to hear what my message sounds like mm-hmm. to almost remind myself to stay on my path. Mm-hmm. That's the message I got. And then yes. just kind of you truly believing in that. And then people will automatically gravitate to that because you believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I want to take that a step further. Mm-hmm. Um, see, I'm quoting your songs again. And I love how you say, just me, it's just like a program. Splits, no acceptance. You are, let's just start actually. It's in your body. Okay, I don't know the song, but somewhere in your amazing discography, mm-hmm. you mentioned something that I've always been saying is I feel like, like you said, we're all connected. Mm-hmm. I feel like we are all. I honestly believe in this collective consciousness thing. I feel like it's all related to like the law of attraction mm-hmm. and just like just the laws of nature and manifestation and just going back to you know your passion and like commitment to like I'm making music for me going back to like how we both agree on like we're all connected Mm -hmm. it makes sense because if if there's an element you know a a string kind of attaching all of us to some extent Mm -hmm. it makes sense that if the one is the whole if the one is passionate about whatever it makes sense that the whole would also be passionate about it Mm -hmm. and sowing those seeds of doubt right like are they gonna like my music Mm -hmm. oh i'll never be this oh i'll never be on stage or i'll never so and so yeah it's not about that then the whole will actually respond to that negativity Mm -hmm. and then the whole won't fuck with you Mm -hmm. because you don't fuck with you you know so i just kind of wanted to point that out i see what i do want to hear more about though is you know you mentioned you know finding a group you Mm -hmm. mentioned like you know, after that, I went straight into like trying to connect or, you know, ways to get my out, art out there, you know, producer, mm-hmm. you know, videographer, you know, whatever, all that stuff. What was that process like? Kind of just, you know, what are people that I can network with, you know, so I can, you know, help connect and, and just build my platform? Yeah, I am. Um, I, I thought at the time that was like the best option was to use social media. So I just started searching through hashtags um chicago producers um chicago videographers things like that i was working with a producer from indianapolis at the time but i could tell things were going south (laughs) so i was like it's time to (laughs) to get some help from someone else so Mm. i'm like i need i need to branch out and also i felt like indiana just wasn't it, it wasn't having enough of events and there wasn't enough connections to be made there it seemed too small so, um, searching through the hashtags, I ended up making connections in um, Chicago here, and it just helped me to get so much more music videos done. I started getting more beats, and that's when I started to really, really be able to be like, wow, I'm, I'm going to release music all the time now, you know? Um, it just in the beginning it all seemed so impossible like we were kind of talking about earlier because you know i would watch things like bet growing up in trl 106 and park and stuff and it just seemed like like so it seemed like almost like you had to be famous to make music or something it's almost like i initially i didn't want to be you know people to look at me like why is she trying to make music you know it's like you make music kind of what you were saying you make music for you because you love it it's not about trying to be michael jackson or that like you know i'm not making the music for that for that absolute goal it's just like this is something inside of you that you got to get out you know and i'm sorry if i just got off track again to what you were asking me (laughs) initially but that's just where it went (laughs) So it was eventually just like, I just got to get it out. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I I found some people and I'm loving the process. And Mm -hmm. it's just like, this is what I want to do all the time. Yeah, as much as possible, as much as possible. And 
it's it's so fun because you know when you make beats you make beats that you'll end up loving and you'll use right away or you'll make beats that you're kind of just unsure about and they never get used or they might get used in the future because then you connect to them later you know but the whole process of making music is just so like it's blissful it's just like a whole euphoric day like if you could just wake up and create music top to bottom all day like that sounds so fun mm. <laughs> yeah i didn't know you made beats too well when i say make beats i'm i'm there for the whole process mm. like when i when i have a beat i don't it's not just looking online finding something my producer and i um dj scully and then also i've made music with griffin now um like we sit together while the beat is being made you know Scully. griffin you produce beats <laughs> yeah the he, more you know yeah he's just he's just getting started and he's Out doing here. great yeah he's produced like the last um four last four songs that i recorded well I, i've recorded like eight songs recently so he rec- he he did four of them half of the the most recent music i made just just learning on his own how to make beats he wanted to help yes. out so um the process of it process of it is beautiful sorry I'm like literally slipping up a lot. I, to be honest with you, I'm wondering if I might be preparing to have a seizure in the next couple of days or something because I, if I'm like fumbling over my words and stuff, that usually means that there's some glitches happening. So I'm just saying this right now. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about epilepsy here in a little bit, but um, yeah. As far as with the beats, like you know, we sit there. Scully will start pressing these buttons and I might be like, ooh, this sounds good, you know, or he'll, you know, start doing something else, making these other noises. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. Or I might say, "Eh, like, I like that. But can we put that later? Like the beat isn't ready for that yet. Like we need things to be a little softer and smoother. And then then the beat, you know, then this noise can come in. So I don't press the keys always. Sometimes I ask, you know, if things are being made and I'm just like, you just let me do it real quick. And I might come up with something, but yeah, I'm there for the whole process, like the ground up. The the music is built with my vision from top to bottom. Mm-hmm. The videos, all of it, everything. Wow. Mm-hmm. I love that holistic, you know, full stack mm-hmm. process, you know, something I aspire to, to do because I'm at the point where the reason people are like, Gartasia, why are you going to drop next song? I can't find a beat. <laughs> Right, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I got bars. I be mm. writing. I be mm. making melodies all yes, the time. Yes, that's what I was doing. That's what I was doing. I'm just like I need help. I need someone else to help me. <laughs> you know, it's just fine because I know exactly what kind of beat I want, mm-hmm. but I, I don't see it. And I be searching. And have I, you thought of making beats yourself? Yeah, I don't got mm-hmm. time. Yeah, I made a couple of my beats on my own. I did, and they weren't my favorite. I liked them, but they still weren't my favorite. That's yeah. why. I wanted more help, you know? You need help. Yeah. But I, I want to get to the point. Mm-hmm. I want to get to the point where like, I'm making my own beats. And I'm sure you do too. Because mm-hmm. I feel like like people like Tyler, the creator, people like Kanye West, they inspire me so much because they make their own beats. And it's mm-hmm. like beautiful. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I want to be there where it's like, I got the know-how, like the technical. And like, I know exactly what I want. And it's like, that's when you like crazy. Like, making a beat is so so like i don't want to say hard but it's just like it takes so much focus and investment and time and like paying attention to timing and all of it yeah like i'm just i'm more so just kind of like to be like yeah do that no don't do that (laughs) and then like come up with the lyrics (laughs) Mm. no i hear that's good too Mm. it's like a lot of people put a lot of eggs in different baskets Mm -hmm. and it's like oh i want to be producer oh i want to be yeah i want to be director well, you make be, me feel better for saying that then, like, yeah, like I don't have to feel obligated to do that. And the thing is, like, maybe you can find a way to do that. But how about you just perfect what you're already really good at? That's so amazing. You said that. That's you very know? important. That's yeah. what I'm learning to resonate mm-hmm. with now. It's yep, like, it's so you know important. what? How about I pay somebody else? Mm-hmm. I know that my precious are hard on Monday, mm-hmm. but how about I just give my heart on Monday? to yeah. somebody who's really good yeah. at it. Yeah, and you and can then, still experiment with other things, you know, but put your passion exactly. into to what you're good at, you know. Like, mm-hmm. my voice is my weapon. How about I, can relate. I focus on that? I can relate. Just be re- a much better singer, come mm-hmm. up with more melodies, like, and that's just what I've been doing. Like, I'm really good, melodies, up, focus on that. And it's, I'll do a little edit here. I don't hear it, but it's like, 
90% of my attention, let's just make, go from, they said an enemy of great is good. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm good right now, but it's, I can't be great if I'm good at a bunch of little things. How about I be, I be okay at a bunch of little things, but I want to be great at this. Yes. That's how it should be. Yes. Yes. You could put all your focus there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just having this download. I'm kind of speaking out Mm -hmm. loud, but I feel like, you know, that perspective helps a lot of people. Um, I see your eyes moving around, looking at that pomegranate that you that you identify. You mm-hmm. feel me? And we talking about all this, you know, health and stuff. But we got health right in front of us. Yeah. You feel me? Um, so yes, I usually have kombucha here, mm-hmm. but I ain't gonna lie, I forgot to cop. Mm-hmm. But it's cool because we got carrots. Okay. And we got celery and we got radishes. You feel me? Yeah. And most importantly, we have the star of the show here. We have um, this pomegranate. This pomegranate, yes. Yeah. Have you had raw pomegranate before? No. So it's going to be a first for you. Wow. I, I will say. Dang, this looks crazy. Oh, whoa. You feel me? Okay, it got beat vibes. Um, yeah, the way oh, the beats you'll, you'll, are. You'll see. You'll see how interesting it is. You could take that little piece. Really? Yep, okay, yep. just take this whole thing? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, don't worry about that. And you literally just, you just nibble on the seeds. Okay. And uh, it gets a little messy, so you can like spit it out afterwards. Oh, this is yummy. Yeah. You just nibble on them. I feel like I need, um, here, will you hand me my juice cup? Yeah, that's what I'll do. Thank you. Mmm. I didn't know what to expect. It's good. Mmm. You want to pass this to Griffin? Sure. Just nibble on the seeds. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. So you're not supposed to eat the seeds, though? I think you can, mm-hmm. but it's like kind of hard. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like I'm eating the seeds, but you know. This honestly reminds me of corn, like the way that it is in here. The texture. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mmm. Mm. You guys, we are enjoying some alkaline basic you know, delectables, and it just energizes me. Mm. And I love eating this every day, waking up wow. to a fat-ass bowl of vegetables. Ooh. I cannot mm. complain. Mm, super good. Mm. While we're on the topic, though, I would love to to hear, you know, you say, okay, I'm getting out of that lifestyle. You know, I'm focusing on my health. Mm-hmm. What was that like jumping? Um, I don't know if it was a jump, but going into veganism. Because for a lot of people... You know, there's a lot of people, you know, with COVID really uh-huh. focusing on their health. There's a lot of people looking for new alternatives, you know, besides, you know, popping pills, besides getting prescribed pills. You know, they're trying to just, you know, live more actualized, healthy lives. Mm-hmm. So I would love to hear your perspective of, you know, how you became so into, you know, your health and just what veganism was like, you know, on the onset. So... When I became vegan, I had, like, a crazy epiphany. It was so wild. Mm. Um, I was on the beach with my friends. We were in Fort Myers. And I was looking at my um, food at the time that I was eating, which was a gyro omelet. And um, gyro gyro, some people pronounce it. I don't know how to pronounce it. (laughs) Anyways, I was having a gyro omelet, and then I looked over at my arm. And then I looked at my plate. And then I looked at my arm. And then I looked at my plate. And I was like, hold on a second. And, I mean, I was just staring at my arm, looking at the details and looking at the gyro meat. And I just started making this crazy-ass connection. And I was like, this gyro meat looks a lot like my arm. Like, it's, it looks like this is skin. This is flesh. And it was crazy because my friend at the time didn't know what I was thinking, but pretty much just was like, oh yeah, the secret to gyro meat is don't stare at it for too long <laughs> and just started like laughing. And Wait, while this is happening, she actually said that. Yeah. It, yeah. Was, was she just joking or no dead serious? Like, I, I, I mean, joking and serious, I guess both, you know? So I was mm. like, Oh, I don't know. So anyways, I'm staring out at the ocean. We are having brunch on the beach, like a beautiful view. And, you know, I'm seeing the clouds in the sky, looking at this plate, looking at my arm. 
And I, at that moment, I've just had some sort of epiphany. And it was like, you are not supposed to be eating these dead bodies. Like, you might as well just eat a human. And it became so weird to me to eat flesh and skin. That moment changed my whole life. So becoming vegan um, or plant-based was totally unexpected for me. Like, it wasn't anything I ever thought about doing. Like, oh, I might become this or I, I sh- might do this in the future. You know, like any... It just happened out of nowhere. Something told me, stop eating this shit. Like, <laughs> so um, after that, I thought I was sick for like two weeks. I like thought I was sick because I could not eat meat. And I was like calling my parents and my, some of my friends and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. what should I eat? Like, I'm so hungry, but I can't eat anything. Like, what do I do? And um, my my parents were pretty much like, calm down. Like, what's what's happening is like fine. Like, this is normal. There's people out there that are vegetarian. Like, that's what people do, you know? And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Like, it kind of all clicked with me. So I'm like, okay, well, I guess I can be vegetarian. Now I get to experience with being vegetarian. It's like, but I I knew pretty much within those first couple weeks that it was going to be more than being vegetarian. Like, I knew that I wanted to get rid of all animal products completely. So you started off vegetarian? Yes. Yes, definitely. But I, I... became vegan like instantly i mean it, this probably all happened within two three four weeks From at the most meat, four weeks the most. vegetarian to vegan yes mm. yes i did not want anything to do with it never went back <laughs> okay so i did decide that i would try eating dead bodies again mm. and yeah i used the word dead bodies you know that's what it is it is it is what it is you know so um I did try it, and I tried it for health reasons, once again, after being vegan for, like, five years or whatever, and I was just wondering, dealing with my epilepsy as well, I'm thinking, is there any nutrients, maybe, that I'm not getting that could help heal my brain, even, because, you know, I'm thinking that from this accident, you know, maybe my brain has some damage that is just not healing completely, because the the fruits and vegetables aren't giving me everything that I need, it was just an idea, I mean, when you live with epilepsy, you'll try. You're going to try some stuff. You know, I tried herbs, all kinds of stuff. So um, I tried eating meat. I didn't really enjoy it. I ate, um, you know, it was all right, but I didn't really enjoy it. I ate some hamburger, maybe about this much hamburger. Um, I've tried doing it a couple times, and it's like the idea would come to me. It sounded good. Like, oh, yeah, a nice burger sounds good. But then when you start to eat it, it's just like, nah. A couple bites in, it's like, okay, I'm good. I don't really want this. It just feels very strange to eat dead bodies. I don't, not really into it. I've tried eating fish a couple times since then, too. And a couple times I enjoyed it. Um, but no, I don't. I don't. Like, overall, I don't. Anytime that I have tried to be like, okay, I'll try, I don't like it. So at this point, I, I'm not eating any, any animals. I don't plan to. I don't want to. It's like there's no going back. Yeah, I don't. I don't really have any desire to. But um, the the thing about me when I was vegan, I was an animal rights activist. So I was extremely hardcore, um, going to slaughterhouses at 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. Mm. protesting for. Um, pigs and cows and stuff and giving them water before they were going into the slaughterhouse we would be out there like hearing them scream and stuff before they were going in it was pretty crazy and um even some of my friends at the time they rescued animals from um farms like they would rescue chickens and turkeys and things so um yeah i just i don't know i don't have interest in eating animals like I, i feel really good without it i feel great I just don't. Yeah. What What do you think feel? Because what I'm hearing is like the the concept of it. Like, wow, that looks like me. Mm-hmm. You know, and going back to that concept of like connect, collective consciousness. Mm-hmm. Did you kind of extend that to animals? And do you think that's what fueled the? Because I, I I'm seeing like a lot of people just go vegan. It's like okay, I just won't participate. But it looks like you went a step further. Like. Oh, I'm going to the slaughterhouses. Mm -hmm. You know, what was that kind of step from I'm just not going to eat it to like, oh, no, let's this is something bad. Well, when you see videos, you start to see like videos about, you know, animal um, cruelty. 
that's what got me. When I saw videos of what was happening in these slaughterhouses and what has to happen in order for me to drink milk and stuff, um, you know, just being honest and stuff, but like cows are pretty much raped in order for people to have dairy because they need the female cows to continuously produce milk and dairy. So, yes, humans, they use these tools that are like, ginormous dildos and they rape cows and you know get them pregnant to produce dairy for humans for humans i'm like i almost feel more comfortable just hitting up a, a pregnant homie like hey can i get some milk for my cereal mm -hmm. like <laughs> yeah, i don't want to i don't want to drink cow's milk i don't understand why we're drinking from cows <laughs> oh my god I you know, know that. Yeah, you didn't know that? Okay. Well, I didn't know the milk. I knew it was bad, but I didn't know, like, that's what they were doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And oh, my I God. I mean, I'm, I was about to tell you, well, I can send you links to videos, but, I mean, do you even really want to watch? It's up to you. But, yeah, when you see this stuff, I think that's what really makes a lot of people be like, oh. Because I know a lot of people, too, that are just like, I just don't want to see it. They still want to eat the meat. They still want to eat the animal products, but they just don't want to see mm -hmm. what's happening. Mm -hmm. So... That's what got me to be an animal rights activist when I started seeing the footage of what was happening. Mm. Mm -hmm. How did that, this is after you were into music mm -hmm. and like pursuing that. How did that trickle into, you know, your art? That is another thing that made me feel like I should make music is the fact that I could get that information about not eating animals out. So when I first started making the music after coming back from LA and all that, I was making sure that I put that into my music like You're i was trying to influence people now. yes exactly yeah. exactly which is one reason why i wanted to put out music you know even though mm. like we're talking about like saying like oh i've got to make this music for myself but i also wanted to save animals at that time so i'm like i can talk about you know being vegan at least once in every song that got overwhelming in the future, you know, after I like was making music for a little bit. I'm like, okay, I'm sick of talking about animal rights. Like, I just, I want to talk about my, my life outside of that, you know. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really for the animal cruelty, but I'm not so anti... Um, Establishment. Yeah, anymore to where, like, I don't associate with people who eat meat. Because I didn't mess, like, if you ate meat, I, I was so anti. Like, if you ate meat, I did not talk to you. I would not be cool with you. Because to me, it's like, you're evil. You're okay with killing animals. Something's wrong with you. You need help. But that, yeah, that outlook, I mean, that pushed a lot of people away. But I also had so many vegans, like, an army of them. They were all behind me. We were all rooting for that, you know? Like, I, I built a fan base off of veganism at one point in time. I lost a lot of those fans or friends, whatever you want to call them. I don't know if they were my friends or fans or what, because they stopped the friendship with me when I said, I'm not vegan anymore, you know? Mm. And even though I still don't eat animals anymore, I call myself plant-based. I don't use that term vegan. Mm. It's just got bad, bad, like, it's bad vibes with me now. Thank you for breaking that down. Mm -hmm. Thank you for breaking that down. Because a lot of people just be like, oh, I'm plant-based. I'm like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Do you like, sometimes you eat meat, sometimes you plant? That's what I used or, to like, think, yeah. Yeah, or is it like, you just don't want to use the word vegan? So I'm glad that like, for me, it, yeah. it depends. It mm -hmm. depends. For you, you had that experience. Mm -hmm. You know, you just didn't want to. But what? I, the only question I have, though, is um, based on what you described, it seemed like a phase of your life. Mm -hmm. but it didn't seem like something that you were like not proud of yourself for but it seems like you're not proud being associated with the word vegan so like does something happen where it's like like why specifically does that word vegan have bad vibes to you well just because when i called myself that like i said i um i i broke off relationships and friendships with people just because they weren't on the same exact path with me um and which I was kind of, you know, touching base with earlier as far as drinking alcohol and maybe doing drugs and stuff. Yeah, you shouldn't surround yourself with those people. But I cut off my actual like relatives and stuff just because they still wanted to eat chicken and stuff instead of 
what I think would have been better is just still being around them all the time. But when they were inviting me over for dinner and stuff, bringing my own meals, letting them see what I'm eating, you know, letting them ask questions like, wait, what? So, so you are eating a burger, but that burger is made from that, from a mushroom, you know, letting them like learn from me. But I, instead, I just was like, you're, you eat animals, you're gross. Don't talk to me. I don't want anything to do with you. You know, so I just have bad vibes from that word because I, I didn't like the person that I was when I was vegan. To me, being a vegan also means that you're like pretty much kind of like an animal rights activist. But not all vegans are. But that's what it is to me. I, when I was vegan, I was an animal rights activist. So now I'm just like, I'm plant based, meaning I only eat plants like my that's my my diet overall, you know. Um, but yeah, just I just don't like to be called vegan. It just. Uh, the vegans, they were so crazy. They were so crazy. They became crazy with me when I left veganism. Um, I guess I kind of brought that up a little bit too. They just went psycho on me. I started wow. getting um, crazy messages from different people who were friends and vegans, you know, telling me like, you should be on the slaughter truck with them, you know, and like saying, just saying all kind of crazy stuff to me. So I, I lost tons of so-called friendships due to that and i just yeah this be hmm. that word vegan is just like eh, too much for me now <laughs> wow mm -hmm. that is a crazy it felt like a cult story. or something almost you know mm. yeah like a religion that's what it seemed like <laughs> this is your god mm -hmm. well well just like being vegan it's like it seemed like you know this is the way you do things and if you don't do this things this way you're awful and you're doomed you know like a religion type yeah like feeling like my way was the only way so i don't outcast. i don't want to be like that yeah there was like traitor yeah yeah i don't i don't want to feel i don't want to feel like that anymore. again mm -hmm. what i'm hearing i'm hearing like full circle mm -hmm. i'm hearing you know off the record you say you were in school and then you didn't really fit in mm -hmm. you know and then it's like, it was like, where, where's my tribe? I'm kind of like, yeah, still, you know, flittering around. I kind of get along with everybody, mm -hmm. you know. I sit with the cool kids. I sit with the nerds. I sit with the so and so, the athletes, mm -hmm. the jocks. But it's like I don't really see my tribe. I'm kind of like whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. And it's like it seems to me like you finally found your tribe, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And then it's great while it's there, whatever. But then I think it gets to a point where it's like, okay, you know. I feel weird. I feel like I've become that, which I've sought to what destroy. What I didn't want to be. Yeah. Right. Because like, I, I feel like I didn't fit in because I didn't have Aeropostale. I didn't fit in because I didn't whatever, whatever. I, I, mm. I wasn't, I was different. And, and now it's like I'm doing now that same I'm thing. doing the exact same thing mm -hmm. that like people were doing to me that made me feel a way that I didn't want to feel, mm -hmm. you know, and based on what you told me from your music, it's just to relate to people, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like I'm being the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. I'm not relating to people. I'm judging people on surface level shit. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I just love yeah. that maturity. Mm -hmm. I just love that hero story of like, okay, beginning, you know, life, life shit happens, mm -hmm. coming back. And it's like, oh, your desires you had at the beginning, you kind of accomplished that. Like finally fire your tribe. But then you realize like, no, that, that wasn't that's what, not I what I wanted. wanted. Yeah. But it's like, you have to see what you, you have, you have to, to see what you think it. you wanted. Mm-hmm. To see if that was, because you maybe really did want that and that's cool. But some people, they have to see what they think they wanted mm -hmm. and experience that to be like, oh, it's actually not that's that. That's not exactly what I wanted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you were blessed to have experienced that kind of younger. Because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people go through their entire life just like those, you know, those preppy Aeropostale kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. A lot of them will probably go their entire life without like getting out of their box like that, without mm -hmm. having an experience. Still have that same, yeah. Like, okay, mindset. he's a part of the gang. Like that same like you know, click, clicky mm -hmm. mindset. But it's like you broke out of that and then that's liberated you so much. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we hear that in the music. Yeah, thank you. It sounds like you completely see this. <laughs> you <laughs> thank see you the whole so vision. Much. Yep. Yeah, I see. I know I see it because I'm, I'm different, different versions, mm -hmm. not like the vegan 
But with me, it was more so um, trying to fit into like the frats, trying to fit into like oh, the Chicago yeah. party scene, trying to fit into that. And it's like, yeah, I'm not trying to hang out with these club promoters. I can't even picture you trying to fit into some frats. Like that just sounds goofy. <laughs> it just sounds goofy. <laughs> I was, I was stupid. I was, I was all the above. But we live, we learn, and yeah. it's like I was like, yes, I'm thankful for that because mm. now I see like that wasn't shit. Yeah. And it's like I'm so much better. Shows here. you who you are. Yeah. Exactly. So, yes, I love that story. A lot of people are going to just soak that in. I do want to uh, talk about, though, if you're willing, is just, you know, you mentioned epilepsy. Mm-hmm. You know, how, how, how has it been like not only living with epilepsy, but pursuing, you know, your passion, art, with epilepsy? Mm-hmm. Well, um, you know, if anything, having epilepsy has almost pushed me to create my art even more. Because it literally just, it it helps me get through feeling hopeless. Creating art makes me have something to look forward to and be excited about. Whether it's on canvas or music or making clothes, which I do as well. Like the shirt and these little shorts, you know. Um, So, yeah, it's like epilepsy... I mean, it it completely changed my life, you know, but I use, I use it to help connect with other people with epilepsy as well at this point, because a lot of people with epilepsy don't talk about having epilepsy. Mm. It's people feel awkward about it. They feel weird about it. A lot of people, more people have it than you think. Yes. Yeah. Like, like millions. Yeah. Have epilepsy. Yeah. Um, people are embarrassed you know, and especially because a lot of people don't know what real seizures look like. They see things from movies and on television and stuff. But, you know, it's not pretty. It's not glamorous. It's, you know, I, I, when I have a seizure, I'm not even conscious. So I live with the before and after effects of the actual convulsion, convulsion part of the seizure. And... I can't imagine what it's like for my friends and family to go through seeing my convulsions. Um, I mean, I I recently was able to see myself seizing for the first time because my mother took a video and I asked her to do that after living with epilepsy since 2014, since the car accident. I asked her to take a video. I wanted to see, you know, and she said, you, you do, you know, she said, I, I've thought about it before, but she said, usually when you're having a seizure, I'm trying to help you. That's my main focus is just trying to make sure you're comfortable and make sure that you are safe. And I said, yeah, I, I want to know what it looks like. And um, also so that we can show the doctors so that they can see exactly what my seizures are like. And then I said, also, because I want to show people what epilepsy looks like. So um, my mom took a video of me seizing. That was the first time that I really got to see myself seize. And even in the video that she took, it was when I was coming down from the seizure. So it wasn't even during the, the worst part of the seizure because she had already given me an um, emergency medication that you have to insert through my nose. Um, because obviously if I'm having a seizure, you can't put anything in my mouth. That's not going to work. So, um, yeah, just living with epilepsy has just... If anything, it's encouraged me to keep going. It's keeping me motivated, you know, because I'm like, I never know when it could be over for me. I feel like we all live that way. Like, you know, anything could happen any time, any day. But because of my epilepsy, I feel on edge even a little bit more because it's not about, okay, like I could walk out the door and, you know, be shot or killed by someone or hit by a car, get in a car accident. It's like, I could be in my own kitchen chopping some vegetables and accidentally stab myself in the stomach. So all I, all I can do to stay positive is keep creating art because I love it so much and it makes me feel like I'm expressing, you know, the emotions I go through. Some days feeling sad about epilepsy, some days feeling angry about epilepsy, and some days feeling happy about epilepsy as far as, oh wow, I've gone this long without having a seizure. So the the emotions are just roller coasters, and I'm very thankful to have art to to be a release to keep me going, to keep me motivated. Yeah, and um, 
you know, if you have any other questions about epilepsy, like, do not feel shy about asking them at all or feel uncomfortable because I gladly will answer questions because people really don't understand. Like, they don't understand at all. I've had so many people, you know, tell me, you are like, oh, you just, just take these herbs or get more rest or this, like, it. no, this is actual trauma and damage to the brain and the nervous system. It, it can't be looked over. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for sharing that. Mm -hmm. I know it can be really hard, you know, feeling alone, feeling like there's not others, you know, going through what you're going through. Mm -hmm. And I feel like what's really brave is you feeling these things, but taking the responsibility to be that person to help others not feel alone, mm -hmm. you know? Cause it's like if you don't see it, then be it, then be it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, it's easier said than done, but it's just, it's really inspiring, you know, and and energizing to see you do it, mm -hmm. you know. Well, thank you. You're welcome. I just want to commend you for that. Thank you, thank you so much. Who knows? Maybe someone watching this will, you know, be able to relate. Maybe someone has epilepsy watching this video, you know, that we don't even know about. So, yeah. That's a, a major thing um, when you have epilepsy is to have people to relate to that understand what it feels like to have epilepsy because everybody on the outside just kind of sees it, but they don't know like all the different steps that we go through in our brain of living with epilepsy. So I appreciate you having me here to talk about all of this. Absolutely welcome. Definitely. I, I do want to also, you know, just take this a step further and ask like so a lot of times people may have a condition it doesn't matter you know some people you know struggle with hiv or some people mm -hmm. have you know things that were born with congenital di diseases you know some people struggle with you know sickle cell just people have these different conditions mm -hmm. and like you said a lot of people hide it about themselves mm -hmm. a lot of people you know don't have the confidence to, to talk about it mm -hmm. you know and i was actually watching your instagram maybe six months ago or like when we we're supposed to do the podcast. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you had recently had, you know, an occurrence, mm -hmm. a seizure. Mm -hmm. And it was really inspiring and just really moving for me, you know, seeing you kind of really be vulnerable about mm -hmm. it, you know, just like, you know, pulling no punches. Like you show the pictures of it. And it's like, at first I was like, wow. Then I look like, wow, like that takes, like, I don't want to say it takes balls, but that takes mm -hmm. like, fuck like that takes like you know that takes a lot to like just show yourself like that to the, mm -hmm. to the world mm -hmm. you know and just like I'm, I'm just curious to see like what did that take from you to like to, to get to that point to just like you know what this is like a part of me this is my, one of my struggles and like accept me for me mm -hmm. like how did you get to that point with the epilepsy um to be honest like it's crazy that you bring that up but last year was really major for me in that um you know, aspect of like, I did have something very traumatic happen to me. And it was around the time um, where you and I initially were going to do the podcast together. But I um, lost, you know, some of my teeth from hitting my face on the concrete while having a seizure. It came out of nowhere. I was literally walking from the car, from Griffin's car into Scully's house. We were making music that day. I mean, it happened in a blink of an eye. So, um, yeah, after that, it just was like, I couldn't believe that, that that situation happened to me in general. And then plus at the beginning of the year, I had actually smacked my face in a public restroom while having a seizure. And I mean, was, I don't know how I didn't lose my eye. It was so close to my eye. I had to get stitches and all, all kinds of, um, you know, work done because I was so close to hitting my eye and after those two things happening last year, it was just like, okay, people really need to see what epilepsy is like. Like, I, I can't just talk about it and say, oh, I hate having epilepsy. Like, that's one thing. Like, these people need to see what it's like day to day with epilepsy. So I just decided I'm, I'm showing people 
what my life is like with epilepsy. I'm going to talk to people about this. I'm going to talk to people about how you have to be babysat when you live with epilepsy, how you have to tell people like, hey, I'm about to get in the shower. Like if, if they're at home or if they're gone, depending on how bad your epilepsy is, because you might not even be allowed to be alone at all. You're too risky, you know, to hurt yourself. But yeah, you know, I have to let someone know, hey, I'm getting in the shower. Have to let them know, hey, I made it out the shower. Just letting you know. Um, if I want to go on a, a walk, even by myself, have to let my mom know or my boyfriend know, hey, I'm going to go on a walk and let him know, hey, I made it back safely. Um, at this point, I have a watch now that is supposed to contact my emergency contacts if I have a sudden fall. And then they would, I guess, at that point, call me. And if I answer, they would know I'm okay. If I don't answer, then they would assume, okay, Tiana probably just had a seizure. We need to get 911 to her instantly. So pretty much... I just live like, kind of like, what's next? What's going to happen all the time? Um, like even, it's it's so crazy. Everything is scary pretty much when you have epilepsy. But, so you have to like get past it. But walking up the stairwell alone, I just, I have visions like, am I just going to end up laying down on face down in the stairwell with the paramedics around me in the next couple hours, you know, or something like, or wake up in the hospital and, find out I had a seizure three days later like it's very insane to live with epilepsy and um yeah everyone's epilepsy is different we could we could make this whole podcast about epilepsy so I don't I don't want to overwhelm you with it but there's so many types there's over a hundred types of epilepsy and there's different types of triggers and um Something I will point out, since you and I talked about it earlier, with my epilepsy, it has nothing to do with light. It's not affected by flashing lights or or noise or anything like that. Um, But some some people are, you know, so there's so many versions of epilepsy. You know, some people might not be able to eat carrots because of their epilepsy. Like the taste of a carrot or the smell of a carrot could trigger a seizure. It's very detailed. Everyone's epilepsy is so different. It's just like the most insane, like mental trauma disease. I don't even know what to call it, you know, that that I could think of people to go through. Being just terrified of yourself and your own brain all the time. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, just like you didn't. You didn't ask for that, you know, Mm -hmm. that car accident that triggered that, like you couldn't have anticipated that, you Mm -hmm. know? So it's, it's, it's easy. Like I'm thinking about what I would do because that's what humans do. And it's just like, I don't even know like how I would process that. It's just, it it seems like it would be easy to just like shut down. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what's the point of this all, Mm -hmm. you know? Cause it's like, I didn't ask for this. Why me? You know? I've been there. I've been there a lot. Exactly what you said. I've been there. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and just hearing you now, just just speaking about it. And, you know, I'm not saying you don't go through those why me phases anymore. But, you know, just making every second count, mm-hmm. you know, to just to just be that hand reaching out to other people, you know, struggling with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it means more than you know. Yeah. And other people with um, disabilities in general, that's another thing that helps me stay inspired and keep going to not just 100% epilepsy. They call epilepsy a a disability, but um, there's so many different types of disabilities too, you know, and and handicaps and things. And when I come across someone that has some sort of a handicap or a disability that's visible, even though my disability epilepsy is, it's invisible until I have a seizure, Oh my gosh, to see these people that that are just out here living life still, whether I don't know what's going on in their head, you know, what they're going through that, but just to see there's other people out here struggling and going through things on their own, but they're still making it and surviving, that is so motivating. People with disability and handicap motivate me so much. So much. Yeah, they just cut from a different cloth, you know. Mhm. They just keep going. They just keep going very strong. Yeah, it's yeah. um you know, it just it just makes us sit more with gratitude. Mhm. You know, be thankful that you could have that you woke up today. Mhm. 
and it's like before you go into like oh i gotta pick somebody up or oh i'm yeah. running late just people didn't wake up today mm-hmm. you know like the sirens is like pissing me off mm-hmm. the police went by like the 12 you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. three or four times it's like huh before i get frustrated like that's fucking up my podcast it's like there's people who can't hear yeah you know mm-hmm. or like can't you can't use arms and legs you know exactly or you mm-hmm. see some fucked up shit Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like, I wish I didn't see that. But it's like there's people who can't see Mm -hmm. or it's worse. There's people who used to see and then now they can't see. It's Mm -hmm. even worse, I feel. So it's just like not to like be fearful, not to go through life fearful, but to go through life, you know, leaving some of that bandwidth, just like separating a bunch of that bandwidth. 50% 50% as much as you can, just like, I don't touch that. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't touch that. That's for gratitude. Mm-hmm. That's for gratitude. That's nothing else. Not emotions, not anger, not jealousy, bitterness, regret. That's just gratitude. Gratitude, yeah. You know? And, um, yeah, I love, I love you know, just the message of that. I do want to, you know, just to, to help people, you know, other people with disabilities or, you know, with living with epilepsy. You know, what kind of ways or resources, you know, or groups, or did you find other people just ways to, you know, to kind of talk about it or, you know, what, what kind of resources did you use to help you kind of process when you found out that you had that and, and just kind of, I don't want to say cope, but just live with it. Um, majorly, I would definitely say social media. Social media is very helpful in the networking and that aspect. And, um, Facebook has been a, a big spot for me. Like I know over a hundred thousand people with epilepsy in these different groups and stuff. And I mean, they're so responsive. Like everyone in the groups just want to help each other. You know, you can get on there and say, oh my gosh, this just happened. Is, is that because of my epilepsy? Do you guys think that that means I'm going to have a seizure today? And you get a hundred responses saying, oh yeah, that happened to me. I ended up seizing or you know, this, this, and that, and so, yeah, using social media was the biggest help. All I did is type in epilepsy support, you know, and it's just tons of groups, and, um, you know, there's going to be people who live with epilepsy that can't do that, though. Their brain can't even focus enough for them to use the phone to look up epilepsy support groups, so I really encourage people who are living with someone who lives with epilepsy, you know, if it's their child that has epilepsy, their mother, father, sibling, relative, I encourage them to join these awareness groups as well so that you can just learn more and get information to help out your um, relative or friend that has epilepsy. That's Just keep learning about it because it's so, so broad that like details of epilepsy and that way you know what to do when they have a seizure and after they have a seizure and the signs of the fact that they might be having a seizure. Um, something else that happens with people having seizures is people will mistake it like thinking that they're using drugs or on drugs. You know, if you see somebody just laying on the concrete twitching, you're, you might think, well, what did they take, you know? So we don't want to always necessarily assume these types of things. Some people literally have disabilities or illness, you know, but um, getting these resources, I would definitely say through social media has helped. I'm sure you could use Google as well, but I liked using Facebook a lot because I felt like I'm talking to genuine people, like everyday people and the responses were just great. Yep. Yeah, that's really powerful, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, we all just on this planet, <laughs> not trying to be alone, just mm-hmm. trying to feel like we're a part of something, mm-hmm. you know, and if people can't get that in one shape or another, they'll force themselves to be something that doesn't resonate with their core mm-hmm. to, to get that, mm-hmm. you know, and and whether whether that's a substance, whether that's, you know, some I know people, some people. Sorry, that's why I'm making these faces. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, either mm-hmm. that's through... Some people are addicted to manipulating people. Mm-hmm. Some people are addicted to sex. Mm-hmm. Some people are addicted to porn. Some people are addicted to eating. Mm-hmm. You know? Some people are addicted to alcohol. It's just... And it's like... I've been like a lot of these things. And it's... There's a way out. You know? And... Yeah, a lot of it is just what you're doing, you know, what Griffin's doing, 
It's taking time to look at a wall, Mm -hmm. taking time to just what is calling me. And Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. I don't have the slightest idea of what I'm doing, Mm -hmm. but there's just like this, this heat and this buildup in my chest. It's like, I just need to do something. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but it's like, I just need to be doing something. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, don't worry about the details. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the how. Don't worry about whatever. Just, just, just start, Mm -hmm. just start. And then you are, you got, you're going to screw up. But it's like you, through that, it's the it's the biggest gift you can give yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, truthfully, just going for it. Just going for it because mm-hmm. as you've just made clear, life can be short. Mm-hmm. Life can be f- full of a lot of unfortunate events. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like you just have to make your mark. Mm-hmm. Project yourself. Yes. Project you. Definitely. Absolutely. Um, I feel like this was wonderful. And um, yeah, before we wrap it up, I would love to, you know, what are ways people can reach the amazing Tiana Aura? Well, let's see. Um, I mean, Instagram is an option. I have a YouTube channel as well. Um, If you really want to tune in to some of the music and then also I have videos there where I talk about my experience living with epilepsy. So um, those are relatable for those who have epilepsy or informative to those who don't, um, I would definitely recommend YouTube. And then for more so like just like a, a daily fun vibe of what's going on in my life, that's where Instagram or Facebook kind of comes in at this point. TikTok, I use it here and there. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much on all the social medias under Tiana Aura, the same name. Mm-hmm. And Can you um, the spelling, please? Yeah, it's T-I-O-N-N-A and then Aura, A-U-R-A. And, um, yeah, you can, if you type in that name anywhere, you're going to find me, put it on Google. You're going to find me. <laughs> call me, reach me. If you wanna. Oh, no, uh, you didn't start. I messed it up. The, 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 call me, beat me. If you want to reach yeah, me. Beat me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yep. I remember these, that. These, um, Impossible. That's what it these was. Gen, these Gen Zers can never. Yeah. They don't know. <laughs> they, they don't know they don't about know. that. <laughs> they don't know nothing about that. Any, any final closing words to say to the listeners? Um, not necessarily overall. If anything, I just want to say thank you to you again for having me. It was Namaste. it was great. It was great. I appreciate you. Um, I'm honored to be able to converse with you. Everything went very well. I feel like we, you know, like Griffin kind of was saying when we took a little break earlier, I feel like our conversation's just very smooth. It flows very well. And you're a very easy person to talk to. Thank you. And a very positive person. So, um, yeah, I want to close this by saying I root for you. <laughs> thank you so much that means so much yeah. i appreciate that mm-hmm. and thank you griffin for making this possible yeah for hiding in the corner we hiding appreciate corner, it you know yeah griffin was the connection right here you know what i'm saying hey. talk about plugs whole yeah. time whole time yeah. oh stay me? tuned for new music that's what i'll say <laughs> yes yes any dates any shows or um well i don't have necessarily any um performances right now i just did one but they'll, they'll be coming up for sure mm-hmm. got a lot of new music coming out so yes you can um look for new videos that's for sure super excited um still got it in me <laughs> um as always stay hydrated mm-hmm. stay breathing in that good ass oxygen and most importantly most importantly stay basic